Hi kids, it's Miss Worley and I wanted to show you a couple of things about tonight's homework. You're to go to the, um, uh, let's see, the data visualization page on USGS through the link on your electronic agenda and it's going to let you see a bunch of data about um, the San Francisco Bay watershed and the amount of salt in the water there. But I wanted to talk about um, the actual geography first. So what you see here is a picture of the San Francisco Bay Area. This is San Francisco right here, and uh, this is North Bay. Um, when you go under the Golden Gate Bridge, you go right through that entrance there, and then you'll be in Oakland and Berkeley, and you've got San Ramon, and Napa's way up here. Uh, if you follow these rivers backwards, you'll end up over this direction, and that's Sacramento. Um, all of these little green lines here are going to be waterways uh, that fill up with melted snow water and flood down into this bay area. So you can see this highlighted brown area is a real nice um, wet area most of the year in typical climatic periods of time. So we've got an awful lot of water coming through the um, mountains and the hills this direction. They fill up through the year and as that snow melt melts then um, the water continues to rush down. Uh, if the water from the snowpack is not um, high, then um, these waterways are really very, very low. They're not as filled as they normally would be. So if the waterway is low here, then um, these areas won't fill with fresh water very much. So that means that the ocean, which is gigantic, will actually backfill some of these watery areas with salt water. And salt water is usually about 35 PSU. Um, that's a measuring unit for salinity, for amounts of salt in that water sample. So um, in times of low water or uh, drought, we would expect that the amount of fresh water is declining and you would have a whole bunch of ocean water kind of filling in the gaps. In an area of normal rainfall with high uh, snow melts in the springtime, then these riverways and streams would be very filled. The water would be very fresh in this area. The fresh water would be here as well as down here. And these tributaries would be pushing out the salt water and filling this area with a fairly fresh water pool. So that's just a general geography lesson. If you take a look at some of the other sites, you can take a look at this one. It's a little different version, but again, San Francisco and then all the towns around that area. But this is a very, very large um, waterway. And again, San Francisco, or excuse me, Sacramento and Roseville are way up into the top right hand corner here. And this water comes from the Sierra Nevadas and a few other smaller hill systems that are um, in California. And they really fill up these waterways with all of that melted snow. So what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to go to the website link. Let's see if I can get that to go. Um, and here you are. You're at the USGS site. You're going to um, make certain that you read the back, but I will not read all the details to you just to try and make this video a bit shorter. You're going to pick a year. Let's start with um, maybe a recent year. So let's go with 2014 and we're going to go to the selection page. I need you to read this, but again, I'm trying to go quickly. So I'm going to go straight over to the side. It says January 14th, 2014. So right at the beginning of January or 2014. And then I want you to select the full bay area. So you're going to get see all the waterways, but I want you to get rid of the chlorophyll and the temperature and the suspended solids and how much oxygen is dissolved in that water. Just go with the salinity details. That means the amount of salt in that water and hit plot graphs. And so what you'll get is this graphic. This is a side little view of our map that we saw. So San Francisco, the city of San Francisco is right there. San Jose is down low. Oakland is in here in Berkeley. And then you get up here and you're up in the San Ramon, um, Walnut Creek kind of area. Sacramento is not on the picture, but Sacramento River is. So what you're going to see as you're looking through this graphic, you want to try and figure out what is the meaning of this color. Um, you look over in your salinity um, range. You've got high salinity here with 35 PSU. Um, that's a very salty ocean water um, content. And then you've got very low salinity with a number two depicted by a yellow line. So what you're seeing here in January of this last year, um, we had some pretty decent snow melt. And so the snow was melting and 
filling up these waterways and pushing the water down this direction. Snow was melting also here and pushing water this direction. So when we take our samples, we actually saw that the South San Francisco Bay had the highest salinity. And then as this brown lightens up, you're getting less and less salt in the water. So as you move this direction, the water becomes more and more fresh. I want you to notice some trends and notice the color, but then I do want you to go back and I want you to go um, see some other years. So I'm gonna click the choose another 2004 year, but I'm going to fib a little bit. And instead of just picking another month, because I could pick any month um, in 2014, I'm gonna go select another year. So let's choose a different year. Maybe you wanna go to the year that you were born. So I don't know when you were born, probably Gosh, you could be born in the 2000s at this point, right? So let's go to uh, 2001. I'm going to go take a look at that. Again, you're going to take off the chlorophyll and the temperature, suspended solids and dissolved. So just keep salinity. Make sure it's on full bay. And let's plot the graph. So that you'll notice that there is no data for this particular cruise, the February 6th cruise in 2001. No data for this line. But our data does start right here. So as the uh, Bay Bridge is, or, excuse me, not the Bay Bridge, the Golden Gate Bridge is right here. Um, and then right across from Oakland and Berkeley, we'll see that the numbers are pretty salty right here. And then as you go up, 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 again, getting closer and closer into the feeder rivers, you're going to see that the salinity drops. So there's a pretty nice trend. Okay, so take a look, ladies and gentlemen, and dig around a little bit. See if you can see any patterns. If you know that there was a drought one year, go look up that year. If you don't know anything about drought patterns, that's okay. We'll do that together in class this week. Thank you.